Okay. We're today we're setting up a uh, a new style case erector. We call an HPENS. This first section applies to most of our case erectors. Um, we'll have a fold line where all the flaps are folded. Um, it's outside of this what we call a center channel here. So when we're setting it up, we we put our case in there, and then the bottom flaps will um, be folded um, even with the center channel. And then the zero point where the flight bars stop at here, which is in line with this trailing minor flap folder, um, that'll be our the back of our box. So when we place our case in here, the setup point will be back against the trailing minor, and then the uh, bottom flaps where they where the um, uh, score line is will be right along that outside of that center channel. So we'll put this in there and now um, we'll be looking at the center channel there and we'll take that um, long rail, move it out until this score line is along the outside of that center channel. Their arch is high enough, or the top section is high enough, we can erect this case. Now, if it's not high enough, then there's a uh, motorized adjustment controlled from the uh, operating station that will move that up or down. But for the most part, I like to have it a little bit higher so I can erect this up in there. And then uh, I check the position of the flap based on the trailing miner. So right now we've got about a quarter inch in there. We'll try to bring it this is snug up there as we can without getting it over tight. So we'll bring that back in a quarter inch and uh, we'll, we'll carry on from the rest of it. That should be good there. And then the, tra the leading minor flap tucker. Uh, we'll bring it in and uh, the end of the end of the flat surface here, if we pull it in, will be will come pretty close to right even with the end of that flap, although it's not critical. And the right rail, um, which will carry the uh, other side. Of the case. I'll bring it up just so you can see. But what we want to do is just bring that rail in to with, within them eighth inch to a quarter inch. Again, it's not real critical, just as long as it's not too tight. If it's not tight enough, then the case has a tendency to float in there and then the, the miners don't tuck appropriately. And we'll, we'll throw the knock down down and then uh, we'll set the box stop. There's two adjustments underneath here. One of them is the uh, this is a fixed vacuum cut back here. It's stationary, it won't move, but there's a floating cup here that'll float along the uh, length panel of the case. For the most part, if we get it down here as close as we can to where that um, length panel meets the width panel, um, as the, the further the closer you can get it, the better it runs, but um, it's not real critical, and if you can get away with not moving it on uh, when you're changing from case to case, then um, the changeovers go quite a bit faster. The uh, box stop, which is on the end there, we want to bring it up against that stop over there, and we'll bring the box stop back so when it's in that position, it'll be just uh, you know, an eighth inch beyond that case, knockdown case. The last adjustment will be the pickup arm. Now this case here is pretty much set up for it already. But uh, there's two adjustments on the pickup arm. One for up and down, one for across. Um, as far as up and down goes, when, the, when it's in down position or in the up position, 
uh, about a half inch from the top of the width panel there. Um, it's usually good, and then you don't want to have any cases land on a, uh, a crease or a, a score line. Um, although, it, if you can't, if you have to have it on a crease line, it'll probably still work. It's just more comfortable with it, not on the score line there. And then the uh, last adjustment will be the arch and the top rail. So we'll close the guard doors here and start the machine up so we have power to that arch motor. And then uh, we'll lift that panel up and it'll lower the arch down and we'll set that top rail down or the top section down until it's just above the top of the case. Um, it's controlled by a switch on the, on the uh, operator station up here. Uh, there's up and down and a jog button. We don't want it too terribly tight on there, just so it sits above it. Um, again, as long as it's down there, you can do this some fine tune while it's running. Need be, but it's not real critical. Just as long as it's down there, the loads can get a hold of hold of behind it. The top rail is adjusted on this side, and we'll bring it in until I touch that case, and then I'll back it off about a half turn. You'll see the bottom vacuum cups in the box stop are attached to that floating channel. So as long as you have the uh, the main cups or the vacuum cups um, on the main body of the case and not on the flap, uh, the better off you'll be. Now there are certain instances where the bottom cups will be on the flap, particularly on small boxes. But it doesn't seem to hurt it. But if they're on the body of the box, they'll be much better off. And then uh, that's adjustable by the handle out here. Again, on your small cases, you want that in as tight as you can, and then on any stove pipe boxes that have a um, height that's longer than the width, um, is when you'll bring this out and have some, some more um, control of that case. That should do it for uh, a setup of the case. We do have one more thing to do on the display, and that is to uh, set the parameters for the particular case. And do that right on the front panel here. The case number is what we're going to be looking at. Um, a lot of times, uh, the guy won't remember what that case number is. So if we go into machine status and do a recipe list, the cases will be listed in this recipe. This one here um, is case number 40, the large mark box, or what we called it. Um, so. When we identify which case number that is, we'll go back out to the main screen and punch 40 into that. And then when it starts up, it'll pull the data or the parameters into the PLC. To start the machine, we'll pull up on any e-stops and any remote e-stops on the machine. Close the guard doors and then hit reset. That'll put uh, control power to the components. And then uh, when the uh, cycle start light flashes, you can push that and that'll start running the machine. We're doing a case change over here. The same rule applies. The, uh, the fold line of that, that box will, will be right along the outside of that center channel. And uh, this case is uh, quite a bit narrower or 
uh, shorter than the other box we were running, so the center channel is going to have to come in quite a ways before we really get started here. And now we'll adjust, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, the long rail in until the score line is just on the outside of that center channel there. Now we'll double check the adjustment here with that trailing minor flap. And we'll need to bring it in about a quarter inch. Leading minor. Again, the uh, when it's folded in, we're going to try to bring that flat portion of it right to the end of the end of the flap. Although, again, it's not too critical. We're going to lay this case down. We'll adjust the box stop and the bottom vacuum cups. Um, this is a stationary one. This one floats back and forth. So, if we get it just so it's right along the end of that length panel will be in pretty good shape. Um, well, if you can get away with it, of not adjusting them, then your changeover goes quite a bit faster. Um, I'll show you how to adjust that one here in a minute here. We'll get the box stop. The box stop's on the same tube, and we'll run it down. eighth inch beyond the end of that case just to give it a little bit of room for any uh, changes in corrugated. Alright so the vacuum cup adjustment is down underneath here. We'll just slide it down. Uh, it's not too critical so just kind of get it as close to the end panel as you can. Pick up arm while we're here, we can go, go ahead and adjust that. Uh, this one doesn't seem like it's too big, too much difference between the other case. It is a little bit uh, narrower, so we'll just loosen it up and just slide it down again. We'll try to keep the uh, vacuum cups from being on a score line, so we'll just kind of tuck it in just a little bit. Now we'll close the guard doors and um, turn the machine on and we'll do the arch adjustment or the top section adjustment. I'm gonna erect the case up. I'm gonna tuck one flap and you can tuck both of them in. Kind of hold the case there while we bring that arch down. And then we'll bring it down until it just touches the top. We'll start, close the guard doors. You gotta start the machine or, or at least hit reset. That will get power to that DC motor. And then uh, the up and down switch, we'll put it in the down, and then the jog button will enable the arch motor, and just bring it down to you just touch the top of that. And if you go too far, you can always go back up just a bit. We're going to bring the uh, top rail in, just till we touch the case, and we'll back it back out a half a turn. You'll see it contact the case, and the case will start tipping one direction and just back it back out a half turn. The uh, center channel adjustment, I'm going to leave it where it is. Um, we could probably bring it out right now. If you notice, it's, it's on the score line of the box. Um, and we'll just take it out just a little bit to get it off of that score line. Um, 
It'll be on the on the flap of the box, but I don't have a choice here. So the last part of the deal, or the last part of setup here, um, the last case we're running is number 40. This is a different case, and again, you can hit machine status, go to the recipe list, and then you can look through. There's one through 40. Um, that's where we were last time. This case happens to be number one. I call it the Red Bliss, but that can be any number you choose for any case you want. So we'll go back out to the main screen, hit case number one, enter, and then uh, when you start the machine up, that data um, will be loaded into the PLC. To start the machine, um, we'll pull out any of the e-stops, uh, push reset, and then when the stack or the cycle start light starts flashing and push that and the machine will start. We'll fold that first one in there, it'll bring the ones in from the hopper.